I don't know that I introduced myself. I'm Pastor Nate, lead pastor here, and uh, honored uh, to be with you this morning. And uh, we're actually going to kick off a series that, uh, that's going to run for, oh, probably a couple months this year. And um, it's called uh, Start With One. Um, if you'll put up that thing that uh, Pastor Austin made, that graphic, I think that's what it's called. Uh, I was going to call it um, House in Order. I was going to call it uh, Start With One. I was going to call it Wisdom. But really, Wisdom is the principal thing. Or I mean, I had a hundred different things. Well, here's what we're talking about, because sometimes titles and all these kind of things are just overrated. We're talking about what God says is the key to bring order to your life. Heaven's flow, what God wants to do, what God says is key, and you and me holding and holding his word as that final authority, and not just his word as authority, but his word as in he is one that doesn't lie, he is one that will do what he said he will do, and, and, and so will I, and so will I, I will do what he said he told me to do. And so if I'm going to if I'm going to have my house in order, if I'm going to have uh, if I'm going to ex- experience and how many of you know when things are in order, don't you just like that? Things are in order. Uh, and, you, you know, when you go to the you got to go to the bathroom and you run into the bathroom and the the, the sign to the, you know, to the gas station, you're on the trip and you get over there and then there's a sign on the door and it says what? Oh, isn't that frustrating? It can be that could leave, leave you in a bind. <laughs> For real. <laughs> Out of order. When things are out of order, there's just not, it's, it's frustrating uh, when they're not working. When you go to turn the key on the car, maybe somebody experienced this this morning and it just clicks because of the cold. It's just not working the way it's supposed to. There's a flow and there's a way that things are supposed to work. And I loved um, this weekend, you know, this last past weekend where we had Brother Marty here and he was um, really both services talking about um, being led by the Spirit, Right? And then also, am I fly down? No, all right. What? Huh? Oh, it's snow. Well, we can start this next year. I mean, not next year. <laughs> next week. Uh, here, I mean, I would love to start this. We can absolutely. And I mean, I feel like the Lord was doing, you know, what do you want to do, guys? Feel, go, feel free to leave. I, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm probably will preach this again next week because I, I know that we have a half. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do what I got in the bathroom this morning. All right. So, and it was in order, but I wasn't on the throne. I was seeking the Lord. Though. I was getting ready, fixing my hair. And, um, and, and we're going to share what we what, talking about. Turn, open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 17. And this is where the Lord took me this morning. And um, I was thinking about the words, uh, just going over some notes early this morning um, and even in the deer stand uh, this couple last couple days. Let me tell you, the last couple days in Oklahoma, it was so cold, like windy, cold. I... Um, uh, and since, since this is just family this morning, and we're going to take 15 minutes, and then we, we're going we're gonna to go. And because of that, I'm going to send you up to the booth. Here, send this picture up to the booth. I'm going to share a, uh, a God story, just being led, or just being something that's a blessing um, for me in my life. You know, God cares about the little things. Yes. Um, send this one. Oh, hold on. Select this one and this one. And send it to the media. Okay, I'm going to show you a picture of a deer that I got this weekend um, in the freezing cold. Just something that was just totally a gift from the Lord up on a fence line in the wide open in a place that it doesn't happen. And, um, and, uh, and when it happened, it was so clear where I, said, where I wanted to say I knew it. I, I knew it. But the reality was, and it was really clear in my heart that the Lord was like, I did that for you. I did that for you. And um, uh, I, I'm literally on a, t- a fence line on a, on a wide open hilltop. I mean, wide open. We don't have places like that here in Arkansas, like this place, even wide open for Oklahoma. Um, and it's green grass, about this tall, wheat field, maybe this tall. And a t- uh, just a fence line that's wide open and grass on the other side. And I'm up by this H brace, and I cut a couple little cedar trees, and I sat down, hoping that they would come. The wind was right, and as soon as they jumped the fence, I could maybe pull, draw back and get a shot, and it was going to be like 
you know, let's just try it. Who knows, right? But it was like, I just feel like I need to go to the wheat field. And um, I ended up uh, harvesting a deer, but uh, it was totally the Lord. It was a, it was, it was a crazy shot, um, 60 yards away, uh, walking away, barely gave me a, just totally God. And so here's the deer. It's not a giant, but it's a giant to me. Um, it was one of those ones for me, like I wanted just a buck. It was my only tag I had left, and I wanted to fin- fill out my season. And, uh, and the Lord gave me that deer. And it was just, to me, I don't, I don't want to say magical because it was more of a God thing, a God moment. Go to the next uh, passage, or not passage, but this is, the op- this is how open it is. There's not a tree for like, you know, um, the horizon. Anyway, and so that's just a gift of the, the Lord for me. And actually, that's where I ended up getting them in the backside all the way up through as he was walking away, like thinking it wasn't going to happen. And some of y'all that don't like that, I'm sorry, I apologize. It's a gift for me. Um, but just this is a testimony of just something the Lord did for me. And the Lord did it. I couldn't have made that. I mean, uh, just the way it all worked out and just even getting it drawn, like with my bow and all that, you know. So that's just God's goodness. And so I was in the sand and in the, in the, go to the picture before. You can tell it was a little windy and a little blustery. My whole face wasn't showing the whole time. I actually had that thing up like this the whole time. Look, I had this much. Anyway, and that's how cold it was. And while I was there, I had time to contemplate just sitting there because I didn't know if something was going to happen. And I was thinking about those words about walking with God. You know, that's what Brother uh, Marty was talking about this, this weekend. Talking about the beginning, he's talked about being led by the Spirit. And then on Sunday night, he was talking about singing to yourself, making melody to yourself, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. So just being, again, just aware that you're going with the Lord. Just be aware and keep the fellowship or keep that awareness. And so that was Sunday night. Really, both um, Sunday morning and especially Sunday night, really um, good things for just uh, simple teaching for you and I to exercise, uh, to order our days, and really bring... um, strength to your walk and your relationship with the Lord, not just that it would be like something you come on Sunday, what's the point, or like just kind of spiritual growth, really, because you're in communion with him. And so that was just huge. Well, I was thinking about that, and so I ended up um, looking at different passages about how people walked with the Lord. You know, how many of you think it's kind of cool when people walk with the Lord? I, I think it is, and so I was. I, 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 I that pop, that scripture popped in my head. Amos three three, and it says, "How can two walk together unless they're agreed?" Well, that passage is just really talking about. There's things that one one translation would say this: you can't walk with somebody unless you plan to meet together to walk. You know, you're gonna have to make a communication. Or, uh, in other words, there. there he, the, a lion doesn't roar without prey. Like in other words, things you can't walk. It just—he's not really talking about unity or agreement. He's just talking about these things have to happen. And so um, when I look there, uh, sometimes there's commentary or there's uh, like uh, cross references, you know. And so Bible Hub, I love the a place called Bible Hub. Um, it's probably my favorite place to study. Uh, because you you can hit click parallel and it has you know 28 translations and then the one right there and then all these just so good strongs you can click on see meanings just it'll it'll feed you uh, and the Holy Spirit will just lead you and just as you as you he'll just speak well anyway there was a few places and I ended up just going into Genesis where it talked about how Abraham ultimately it's talked about Enoch we know that Enoch you know he had Methuselah and then he walked with God you know another 300 years and then he was no more 365. Went, with, went to be with the Lord. The Lord took him, in other words. And so we know that Enoch and we know that Elijah chariots of fire. Those are the two that never saw death. Maybe, maybe Moses, you know, but we know that he didn't get to enter the promised land. All right. Anyway, but then you go to Noah, who walked with God. And then we get to Abraham. And it didn't say walked with God. It, it said, the Lord said, walk before me and be thou perfect. And it was in the same kind of like passage, but the Lord had me go look at that. And so I, this morning, that's where I found myself is Genesis chapter 15, which is where this name of this church came from, Beyond Church. And so I was, I was taken back in this hunting experience to even just this, the name change. And, um, and, and that, that's, a, that's a long, lot longer story of how this Beyond Church came about and how the Lord was wanting to bring some things about. 
And so he does things, and he goes, you maybe heard it said this way before, but the Lord goes into your future and brings the words that you're going to need to bring you there. And so um, Genesis 15, you'll find that uh, God you know, comes to Abraham, and he says, I'm going to make you, like, like see the stars, see the sea, seashore sand, you're going to have descendants like this, right? And that was the place um, uh, from there, and, but then it wasn't until Genesis chapter 17 that the name change happened, okay? So I want to go to Genesis 17, verse 1, and I want to re- just read this. This is when Abraham was 99 years old. The Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Now, we read over things way too much. When it says the Lord appeared to him, what does that mean to you? Shazam. I don't know. What does it mean? Does it just mean that all of a sudden he was just sitting next to him like, what's up? Or was it that he appeared and got his attention and revealed himself again? Now, you got to remember that who wrote this book was the Holy Spirit wrote the book, right? Um, but who penned the first five books of the Bible? Anybody know? Moses. Moses, okay, the first five books, the Pentateuch. And he was really intentional about the names of God. Jehovah, El Shaddai, Elohim. Like, he was very intentional about how he used these names. So it says here, it says the Lord, Jehovah. Jehovah meaning the covenant-keeping God. He said that a, co- a covenant keeper showed up and appeared. And he said, so how does that sound that, to say that this is, because here he's recounting something that was passed on from Abraham to his children's children. Because who, who wrote the book? When was Moses? Was Moses went around when Abraham was around? No. So this passage was written from oral passing down and by the Holy Spirit with Moses to write in pen. And he kept, he wrote this down in such a way that, that he, it, with very distinct, the Lord Jehovah, covenant-keeping God, appeared. How does a covenant-keeping God appear to somebody who's 13 years in to an Ishmael and asking the Lord, as you'll see later on in this verse, to bless Ishmael and let Ishmael and my works of my hand and what I've done be the fulfillment of your promise? Say that again. Ishmael's 13 years old at this time. Ishmael is not the son that God promised. Ishmael is the work of Abraham who found Hagar, which was Sarai at the times, handmaiden, and said, hey, let's try having, you know, and making a baby, and it worked. And so Ishmael was born. 13 years later, Abraham loves his son, Ishmael, He's going about his way, doing his own thing, and the Lord has to appear to him. A covenant-keeping God appeared to Abraham, or Abram at this time. And he says, I am almighty. So he's, there's, this is a super corrective verse, just right here. And we said, it's like, oh, hey, the Lord showed up to Abraham, and he's like, hey, I'm strong. And I'm going to tell you something. Like, what did it look like when he appeared? I guarantee it got his attention, and there was some correction that was going on. And he said, I'm the Lord. Now he said, get naked before me, is what this means, to walk before me, not walk with me. But he said, walk before me, now, and, and be thou perfect. He said, here's what he's saying. I mean, I was just looking at this, and the Lord's just like, I'm like, oh, it's so much good stuff. It literally means to walk before me. It doesn't mean walk with me. It, it means you're, you're, you expose yourself fully and show me. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Where are you really at, buddy? And he goes on, and this is where he institutes circumcision, and he introduces inst- inst- in, uh, introduces a name change to him. And what I've been sharing just from my heart is that I just wanted to bring back up the word beyond. The Lord was talking to me about, about a word that was going to bring about even what you don't see yet. Calling those things that are not as though they are. This is not and for the next week, but I'm using these passages that will correlate in the next week's message. But um, when God speaks something to you, He'll do it for you 
because he's a covenant keeping God. He won't do it for you to prove to them. He'll do it to you, for you. He'll keep because he's going to keep his word to you and he wants to prove to you who he is, not to prove to them. That's what I that's what I had heard. So clear. I want to do it for you, not to prove to them. Not to prove to them, but to confirm my word and to keep my word and to prove to you who I am. And all of this comes about, about what we were going to originally talk about today, about how many times as we seek to be with the Lord and we come under his word, it's so easy for us to allow other words into our heart. Words that, are, uh, uh, that, that cause an Ishmael to come about. Because we received a word, and this is found in James chapter 3, that was about uh, something that we didn't have or we, and we wanted real bad. Bitterness, it, jealousy, or selfish ambition. And you remember that even when God came to Abraham and they were in that conversation, Abraham or Abram at the time was frustrated with what he had and about how the Lord was going to bless him because of what he didn't have. And so what he didn't have was he was very aware of what he didn't have. And God promised him about something that he could have, right? And he said, well, it's not happening. I'm going to find a way to get it myself. That's what happened. And if you read on and you talk, we read a lot of times in Romans chapter 4, we'll look at this next week, but how uh, it says that Abraham believed God and he did not stumble. Did you know that, that that's, that's referring to Genesis chapter 17 after he already had stumbled when the Lord corrected him, cut covenant with him with circumcision, instituted a name change and said, now here's what you're going to do. You're 99 years old. You have one son, Ishmael. That's not the son. The Lord said, you know, that's not the one I'm going to bless. And Abraham said, just bless what I might, just bless my Ishmael. Let's just use Ishmael. We can just use Ishmael. And he said, no, I'm not going to do that. You're going to also have a name change. You're going to circumcise all your family, you yourself, and you're going to not be known as Abraham anymore. You're going to change your name and all of your community is going to know you as father of many. Can you imagine how embarrassing that, it's senile that would be, a 99-year-old man that's going to change, give, hey guys, I'm no longer Abram, I'm Abraham, I'm the father of many. They're like, you can't even have any kids, you moron. <laughs> and there was a change, and against hope, he believed in hope. He moved himself back, and that's what this passage is all about, Genesis 17.1. And that's what all of this is about, even this morning, was about, is about God coming to us. And in talking to us, Abraham, Abraham, he found us. He counted it unto, us, unto us righteousness to believe God. And we get that. You're righteous. You're good. We're righteous. We're good. We're righteous. Hey, we're going to heaven. It's all good, guys. Hey, we're getting out of here pretty soon. And the Lord's like, no, that's not enough. What I'm requiring of you is, he said, walk before me and be thou perfect and get back out what I told you. Get that back out. Get back out my promise to you so that I can, I can show you who I am and therefore use you as a display of my goodness to many more, to nations. It wasn't enough. Can you imagine if God blessed Ishmael? We would be nowhere because it wouldn't be based on promise it would be based on works and what you did and it's time that we go back to genesis 17 1 where the lord comes and he says i'm a covenant keeping god who is not just i'm not a covenant keeping god that's limited i'm the covenant keeping god el shaddai all powerful all ability and this is what was passed on in every blessing when abraham blessed his kids when jo when jacob and the lord showed up or god showed up to jacob and he said i am the lord el shaddai i'm almighty i'm the one it's the what what, what jacob blessed joseph with a, and his or the sons as they went to egypt he said let the lord who is more than enough go with you and it, it, this is so important for us that we, have a, we know we have a covenant-keeping God who's more than enough, and the Lord is saying, listen, it, don't, settle, for, don't settle, settle with your Ishmael as promise. Don't let the strength of your own hands and, and let go, but instead go back to Romans chapter 4 and said, against hope, he believed in hope. Let's get hope back out. How do you get hope back out? When you're wholehearted. Genesis 17.1, he said, walk before me. 
Walk before me. And he said, and be thou perfect. What he's saying is wholehearted. That's what that means. It's not just, it's the same word that you see, bring a perfect lamb, a spotless lamb, be, or a complete, everything on that's perfect, completely whole. Walk before me. And he said, be wholly devoted to the word that I promised you before. Be wholly devoted. And, and, and if, if you see something else, this is where he changed his name. And the Lord said, and I want you to start calling some things that you hadn't called before. I want you to change your name. I want you to change what you say about yourself. I want you to change what you say about tomorrow. I want you to change what you say about your business. I want you to change what you say about your partnership. I want you to change what you say about your body. I want you to change what you say about your relationship with your mom and dad. I want you to change what you say about pastoring. I want you to change what you say about whatever it might be. About, oh, this is hard, or how about this? I want you to change what you say. And I want you to go back to promise so that I can move. This is what he's saying. And this is what he's saying for us as a house and as, as leaders. To have, to have a kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven, we're going to have to have his words over us as they are in heaven. We're, put, we're moving ourselves back, and we have to be honest with ourselves and walk before him. And that's kind of a, this is, that's what that means. Like, okay, nothing is, I'm fully exposed. Nothing is hidden. Like, I can't hide it. He said, walk before me. Walk before me. You can't hide it. I'm the covenant-keeping God, and I'm a God who's, and he, and he, he addressed where he was at. And now, aren't you thankful 13 years after the Lord still can come and address where you're at? Thank you, Lord. Just where I'm at, I can, I can mess it up. And you know what? I can say this, and then I can go, thank you, Lord. Thank you. And he'll take and he'll redeem it. God is a redeemer. He's a restorer. He's a relationship God. And, and, and I'm telling you, we got to remember who we serve. We serve the Lord, the covenant-keeping God, who is stronger and greater, and there's nothing too hard for him. And when I really believe that he keeps covenant and nothing's too hard for him, hope yeah. grows, is, becomes bigger, yeah. and now my days and my tongue are ordered with hope. And so just want to say, get your hopes up. Get your hopes up. 2024, get your hopes up. Get back out the word of the Lord to you. Get back out the word of the Lord. And even the Lord spoke into my heart, and this is what I had seen this, just this morning. Is the Lord's like, hey, you're going to have people here this morning. And the, those are people that, that beyond people that I'm calling to, to you. Be, like, in other words, just not just the, it's going to be cold, it's going to be snowy, it's going to be, and there's just a, something just for them this morning. And I was like, okay, we'll, we'll go with this then. <laughs> And here we are. And that is just the word beyond. And, and the Lord saying that from this place, you're going to reach the nations. Amen. That, this, that this, the word is going to go beyond these four walls. And that from this place, people are, the, the message is not going to just stay from, on a pulpit. It's going to go with a people beyond these four walls. Every time you go out, it's, it's going up and out. It's filling hearts, but it's being carried there. And, uh, and that's just, uh, just something just to be reminded of. Sometimes, you know, uh, he was reminding me. I'm reminding you what he reminded me of. Sometimes we can look at this, that, and the other thing. And instead of looking at and holding to what God said. And when I get my eyes off of what God said and I look, get, begin to look at the weakness of a body or like Sarah's womb or this kind of thing, I can begin to try to take things into my own hand and I can settle for Ishmael, and sometimes I've settled for Ishmael. Sometimes I'm too, I'm t five, this long into a place of really discontentment, and, and where I'm trying to be self-satisfied, and it's just not doing it. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? I can get back out, and I can, I can go, Lord, where, where, where did I leave off? And what, what, what is your word that I need to reignite back again? And I need to move, make a move and make an adjustment and change some talk in my family and, and change and even change my, not, you know, change a name, change a word. And that word Abraham, it, that way that even that you would pronounce it and Sarah was it, the, the H it gave. It was the only way you could express that H is by giving breath like it's like the same way like they have different languages where you do the R in Spanish or whatever. You know, you can't, it, it, it has to be, which spoke of 
God's part. Amen? And so don't forget God's part in your 2024. Don't forget God's part. Don't forget his part, which he gave you in his word and his ability. Amen? Father, thank you for these people this morning. Thank you for your plan. Thank you for families that are going and traveling home. Thank you for just encounters with one another, just at home as they're together, for just life just flourishing there. Thank you for relationships, and we just thank you for peace and joy as they go. Thank you for the restored hope and a reminder of your word, that there were, our conversation would be even about as we talk with one another, what are you hoping for? What are we hoping for? What has is, what is the Lord promised you that we'd get back out and begin to articulate with the help of your Holy Spirit? Begin to articulate again the pictures of what we desire for our family this year, for business, for body, for health. Father, thank you for that. That Our conversations with our kids, we could even ask, what do you think? What, 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 do you, what is the Lord showing you? Father, thank you for just a real walk with you. A real God, a mighty God, almighty God we serve, a covenant-keeping God. We love you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Landon? Oh, yeah.